This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to another edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Wherever you are today in Southern California, thank you so much for being here. My name is Ryan Stutz. Always a pleasure to hang out with Logan on this show, which is all about getting you to and through retirement. Logan, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great today, Ron. How about yourself? Oh, just fantastic. It's a great day to be alive. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a cr- kind of a crazy week here. And I'm looking forward to another great show so you can talk to some more folks out there. <laughs> well, I, we have that in common. I'm looking forward to it. And as I always say, almost pretty much every week is I love sitting here for about an hour or so and talking about some you know educational topics and some stories and, and looking forward to a good show. I find it to be a very productive hour, and I hope it is for our listeners as well. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to get in touch with Logan Sadler and get a conversation going. We call it a discovery meeting. You discover things about him. He discovers things about you. You kind of get to know each other. There is no cost at all for that conversation, and it's not going to obligate you to do anything either. Uh, one more time, that number is 8 888-823- Eight 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 two three plan and I will give you that number several times uh, throughout the show here today. Hey, fun fact of the week here, Logan, and uh, I know I don't know if this is true for you, but uh, it, it's not true for me. But I can certainly understand how it could happen. <laughs> uh, the average American has gained twenty nine pounds. Since the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What did they call it? I forget what they were calling it. Was it the COVID-10 or the COVID-15 or something that they were calling it, right? Yeah. yeah something exactly. like that. But yeah. no, I, I, I can kind of see that happening. I, I haven't gained quite that much weight, but I'm definitely heavier now than I was pre-pandemic. And I yeah. think, like you said, Ron, it's understandable just because a lot of us that went to the gym or, or did certain activities, we were unable to do so for a pretty good extended period of time. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but it did throw off a lot of my natural uh, you know, schedule, my natural routine uh, to an extent. And I'm still trying to find my way back into, into being a little bit more consistent about you know, gym exercise and things like that. Yeah. I'm, for the longest time, so many of us were just kind of sitting around, staying inside and you know, not going yep. out and doing all the usual things. And, and then when you do that, you tend to eat more and you know so it's just a vicious circle oh know? yeah I, ne- I never have a problem eating more <laughs> yeah no me either uh, hey let's talk about some financial resolutions and, and i'm wondering if you've already abandoned your new year's resolutions yet <laughs> <laughs> some of the, some of the people listening are like uh oh <laughs> yeah if so here's a new batch of financial resolutions that you could make instead now if somebody adopted one or maybe several of these items as a financial resolution for 2023 what would they need to do in order to accomplish it. We're going to let Logan explain that. Uh, First of all, there are some folks out there who may decide to stop being so disorganized with their finances. Uh, How would you help that person? Yeah, there's probably a few of us out there that are guilty of this, right? Maybe being a little disorganized, especially when it comes to financials. And it's really a great resolution to, if you could do anything at all, that's probably one of the better ones is just to try to be more organized of understanding where things are, you know, and I think that's a lot of what, what a good financial advisor helps you do once everything is kind of organized, help you keep track of everything. But there still is a lot to do on your own as far as keeping things on track, keeping things organized. My, my opinion on this, Ron, is one of the best ways to start is get some folders, you know, um, label one statements, label one, you know, health insurance, uh, life insurance, mm-hmm. your trust, stuff like that, you know, start labeling labeling things, tax documents, all that stuff that is going to be important and put it into like one file. And, you know, every year I always tell people at the end of every year, you know, make it part of your Christmas list, print out a statement from, you know, the year end brokerage accounts or year end annuity statements or, or whatever it is, your year end 401ks, and just kind of start to being kind of more organized. You don't have to save every single month of statements or every quarter, but if you can get at the end of every year, it gives you a pretty good idea of what things look like, keeps things organized to let you know what accounts you have, what's out there. And uh, also, like I said, life insurance documents, stuff like that, because part of our discovery process, Ron, is after our first meeting, I asked for a lot of different information like that, you know, tax, uh, last year's taxes, uh, year-end statements or last quarter statements, health insurance, anything like that, long-term care policies. 
And it's pretty interesting because a lot of the times, most people have a very hard time locating that, right? A lot of times they'll say, yeah, give me, give me a few days to get that over there, right? And, and that to me, that's, you know, obviously they're probably not as organized as they would want to be, right? Which we're yeah. all, none of us are perfect. It happens to all of us. But that's definitely some guidelines I would say, Ron, to get started is just to try to get some files labeled, kind of understand where everything at, is at. I even have a spreadsheet I'll even send over to clients to tell them where they could put everything in there as far as bank accounts, yeah. savings accounts, car insurance, all that stuff, just to try to stay more organized because it definitely, definitely is helpful. Another resolution that people can make is just to stop giving away your retirement savings in the form of hidden fees and expenses. And a lot of people don't understand, you know, how many, how much they're paying out in fees all the time. Yeah, it's funny because I have this, I don't know how often I have this happen, but it's pretty regularly, I would say, where let's say it happens if I meet with, let's say if I meet with, you know, 20 people a week, let's say it happens, I would say five to seven times, okay? Yeah. And what happens, Ron, is I'll still say, you know, what is your current fee or or, or what is your fee? What is what? Sorry, what do you charge as your fee, mm-hmm. and how does it? You know, what does it cost to work with you? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell them kind of how our fee structures work and how everything goes. And then my next question always is, uh, what are you currently paying? And mm-hmm. <laughs> and like I said, about seven seven times they'll say. Um, I'm not sure, right? Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. a lot of people don't know their current advisory fees or even the cost of the portfolio. You know, like I was talking to a client the other day who had a lot of older mutual funds in the portfolio that have a lot, like we talk about all the time, have a lot of added expenses like expense ratios and some other fees that can be involved in those that they had no idea about, right? So you have to include that in the cost as well as some variable annuities and things like that that might have had some very high fees in most cases. So it's just very interesting. You kind of want to understand what is the cost to do business? What is your plan? What is your portfolio costing you? And is there ways we could maybe lower that cost or to make it more efficient? Or, or we, are we structured perfectly where we're at? But understanding the cost of everything to me is, is just super important. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that over the years just because time goes by and we kind of forget the original conversation. You're listening to Logan Sadler and you've got the financial beat on the radio. We appreciate your listening today. Once again, the number to call Regary Financial is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. If you'd like to have that discovery meeting that we talked about so much, no cost, no obligation. Another thing that uh, that goes along with all this conversation here is a lot of people don't really understand the fees they're paying, and uh, a lot of people don't really understand how much risk they're taking in their portfolio. And sometimes you ask them, you know, uh, <laughs> how comfortable are you with risk, and yep. they will tell you, you know, I'm not comfortable at all. But then you look inside their portfolio and find out that they are really invested aggressively. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, Ron, that happens quite often. And, and like I always say, the, the discovery meeting is not really one of those things where I'm trying to see what you've done wrong or, or to criticize, but really just to, it's really a, in your best interest to do a full review of everything. And like you said, understanding what type of risk you're comfortable with, how much risk you want, you know, moving forward. And also where have we been risk wise in the past and kind of getting a good understanding of that. And like you said, most of the people we deal with, again, we are retirement planners that typically our average client is, you know, anywhere from 50 or 60 years old when they come on board. And uh, some of them are, you know, in their in their 60s and 70s, of course. And it's interesting because, like you said, a lot of them are know that they might want to get more conservative based off their situation, or they probably should be more conservative in their situation. And they think they are, right? And then they look at years like 2022 and they go, man, why did, why did my stocks go down so far? And why did my bonds go down so far? I thought I was diversified, right? And so they start to understand that they probably didn't have as well the diversified portfolio as they might have thought and meaning that, that their risk was probably off, right? So it's super important to understand what your comfortability is. And we spend a lot of time with our clients before they come on board trying to understand a little bit more about what their risk comfortabilities are because I think that's super, super important. I always joke, not too many people get mad at the upside, right? But a lot of people get frustrated and disappointed with the downside. So it's very important to understand what is the risk of each investment and what is the you know overall risk of the portfolio and the financial plan and how is that going to impact our decisions now and moving forward? You know, we talk about retirement, uh, of course, on the show every single week. And one of the things that uh, amazes me, and you've cited so many examples of this, there are so many people who have a really hard time deciding exactly exactly when they want to retire and mm-hmm. nailing down a date and you know deciding if they're ready when they can be ready and all <laughs> that kind of thing and that's another area in which you can help 
Yeah, you know, that, that's a lot of what uh, our conversations are about is, like you said, Ron, I mean, if someone comes in here, I'm thinking of somebody I actually just talked with yesterday, they're 59 years old, and they were, you know, man, you know, I'm getting a little bit older, I, I, I know I've got good social security built up, I've got a little bit of, you know, i got a good savings put away in my 401k, house is paid off or close to it, and, you know, I might have some rental income, but I really don't know, what, what is my retirement plan going to look like, right? And so a lot of that starts with, well, when do we want to retire, right? And not that you have to retire on that date. I always tell people, if we say we're retiring in December of, you know, when I turn 62, it doesn't mean you have to. It just means that, hey, we know exactly kind of what things are going to look like at that time for income, our structure, and everything like that of the overall plan. But just kind of narrowing down, when would we like to retire is one question, right? When can we retire is the other question. Because obviously, we all wish we probably could retire right now. But uh, sometimes... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, Ron. But uh, sometimes the portfolio doesn't necessarily uh, show that we're able to when you add in all the assets and things like that. So it's important about narrowing down those two, right? When do I want to retire and when can I retire are two questions. And that's a lot of what we do in our plans is to try to go through and say, okay, if we retired at 62, here's what we're looking like income wise. Here's what your pension would be. Maybe an annuity payment, maybe your, your 401ks and brokerage accounts. And here's what things would look like. Or if we retired at 65, here's what things would kind of look like, right? So running through those different scenarios we have found is very important and helps give the clients a really clear picture of what they're trying to plan for and also how to orchestrate that to get there. Just one more thing I wanted to mention here on this list of financial resolutions that people can make, and and that is to get on the same page with your spouse, financially speaking. And sometimes that's really difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it, it could be a hard conversation sometimes. And I always say, you know, sometimes it's the wife that's very knowledgeable and understands the finances, and the husband kind of takes the back seat there and just doesn't doesn't want to be involved much or hasn't been involved much. And sometimes it's the wife, right, where maybe she didn't handle those types of things. I've, I've seen it all different types of ways. But I think one of the biggest things I always say is most people that uh, you know have that more successful retirement is when they're on the same page as their spouse, right? Again, risk can be different. You know, overall goals can be different. A lot of the planning that we do is customized to to each individual in the plan. But you know, understanding the overall uh, the overall approach of the financial plan, making sure that hey, you know what. Can we get by off of this budget in retirement? You know, if we needed we need eight thousand dollars a month in retirement, is that going to be doable? And kind of running through that with the spouse is so important because you guys have to be on the same page when it comes to financial plans. And uh, like I said, it, it definitely makes a huge impact the ones that have that more cohesive plan and understanding. And again, not that the one whoever it is is, is maybe they're less involved in the uh, in the financial planning process or some of the decisions, but just being there and being involved and kind of getting on that same page to me is is super, super important. So we always encourage people when they come in and we, you know, maybe you're a new, new uh, prospect kind of interviewing our firm. We always recommend the spouse be involved just because both spouses, just because it's something that it, you know, both of these decisions we're going to make probably affect the both of you. So it's important you guys be involved and and really kind of help get on the same page for what it is you envision your retirement and how that's going to look. Logan, we have been through uh, quite a list here of financial resolutions for people to make. And, uh, you know, there are people out there right now uh, kind of reaching for the phone to, to call your number. And uh, I'm going to repeat that again in just a moment. But what happens the very first time that you get together with someone for a conversation? Yeah, our, you know, our very first conversation is, is great because it's a good opportunity for us to really sit down or do it over Zoom and really spend some time together and answer a lot of your questions, right? Like some clients say, hey, you know, I'm 58 years old. I have quite a bit of money saved and I'm looking, should I pay off the house, right? Or should I should I be looking at safer investments? Should I be looking to diversify? Um, when can I retire, right? A lot of those questions uh, come up in our discovery meeting. It allows us to kind of have a conversation and get to understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, what your fears are, you know, when it comes to financial planning, as well as what are your goals and how can we help you accomplish those and really putting together that cohesive plan. But it all starts with that discovery meeting where we're able just to take a deep dive into your situation, get to get to know each other a little bit. I always say this is a big relationship business. You want to make sure that you are able to communicate well with the financial advisor, both of you, if you're married, as well as you know the advisor, you, know, you guys should enjoy the conversation. It should be very valuable. And we do all that at our discovery meeting. There's no obligation, no cost for the meeting at all. We're 
really what we do is we just kind of sit down, take a deep dive into you and your family and see if our firm can't bring some value and maybe be the advisor to help transition you into retirement. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. If you're interested in uh, having a conversation with Logan Sadler, as he just mentioned, it's not going to cost you a penny and not going to obligate you to do anything at all beyond that. But just have a conversation, a discovery meeting, and find out more about your individual situation and, and maybe how you can get where you want to go in your retirement. You're listening to The Financial Beat. One more time, that number is 888-823-PLAN. That number is for Regary Financial with two convenient offices in Hemet and also in Redlands, serving you in Southern California. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is The Financial Beat. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat. You could say the beat goes on with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Brigary Financial. And the number to call if you'd like to arrange a discovery meeting is very simple, 888-823-PLAN. Be sure to remember to use the word plan. That will help you remember the number. But the best thing to do is go ahead and write it down right now. You can grab a pen. And if you can find one and uh, write it down, 888-823-PLAN. Best thing to do is go ahead and call it right now. Then you don't have to rely on your memory, 888-823-PLAN. That is your number to call right now. Leave a message with your name and phone number, and you'll get a call back, and then you can arrange a convenient time to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. Now, this may start with a a phone call. Maybe you might want to do a, a Zoom connection. In some cases, you might want to come into one of the offices. Either way, Logan Sadler will accommodate you and won't cost you a penny and won't obligate you to do anything at all. Logan, I mentioned a few moments ago that not only is there this radio show that is on the on the air every week, but uh, you also have a variety of podcasts out there for folks and also YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can head over to uh, podcasts, wherever it is you download those. Maybe it's Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, wherever it is. You can go over there and check out the podcast. we got a lot of episodes recorded and put up there for you to give you guys, again, some just further information and some education here on retirement planning. As well, we have the YouTube channel. You can actually head over to YouTube, type in The Financial Beat, and you'll find we have a lot of videos on there as far as you know Inheritance 101, how to, how to manage that, top five uh, retirement mistakes, right? A lot of these different uh, videos on RMDs, a lot of different tax planning, social security, should I delay it? Should I take it now? Just a lot of really great educational videos for you. And the best part is both of those platforms, we update weekly content there for you to check out. So there's always some new ones on there. And again, a lot of those might pertain to your situation and give you some further value. A lot of ways to find out more about getting to and through retirement. But again, the most important, uh, the most uh, uh, immediate way to get in touch with Logan is by calling this number, 888-823-PLAN. Hey, getting back to our conversation here today, Logan, uh, let's talk about investing for geniuses. Now, compared to me, you are a financial genius, and I know that you would not <laughs> you would not bill yourself as such, but, uh, you know, having done this for a long time, <laughs> you certainly have picked up a lot of knowledge. Well, and, thanks, Ron. <laughs> and you're always willing to share it with folks. People are always studying geniuses, though, those with incredible IQs and highly intelligent people trying to get an understanding of what makes them tick. So let's look at some of the common characteristics of highly intelligent people Mm -hmm. that you should apply to your financial life. And one way that they all seem to have something in common here is geniuses are highly adaptable. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, I really would. Uh, m- most of them you look out there, I mean, you can think of a lot of these different leaders and, and uh, you know, very smart people that are in the public eye a lot. A lot of them are very, very flexible, and they a lot of them are able to thrive in many different type of environments and settings, right? I mean, that's you look at like some of the different like people like Elon Musk and some of these other people out there. I mean, they're just one of them, you know, a lot of them are very, very flexible. And one, one research noted that intelligent people adapt by showing what they can be done regardless of what the complications or restrictions are placed on them, right? Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. they're very easily adaptable, and they're, like I said, they thrive in a lot of different market environments. I always say most of these successful people that are you know very intelligent, you could put them in any different industry, right? Maybe they got a lot of their you know wealth or things like that from technology. Yeah. Well, maybe they could they would probably be the very similar if they were in real estate, right? Or if they were in this sector or that sector. So exactly, you know, a lot of them are very flexible, and I think the reason why Ron and why that pertains to it is when you look at uh, most of the financial planning and things like that, it's there's things that change all of the time, right? You got to adapt to so many different different, you know, 
facets of the of the financial planning world, like taxes, right? Taxes are always going up or down, right? There's lots of different changes to tax codes throughout the years. Market volatility, right? There's a lot of different things like inflation, income replacement, stuff like that. So it's it's very interesting to see how a lot of these very smart people are able to adapt and, and uh, really change to whatever environment they need to, to, to thrive in that current environment. I think some people, no matter how smart they are, realize that there are a lot of things that they don't know. And uh, geniuses basically understand how much they don't know, and they're willing to learn. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you look at the smartest folks out there are probably willing to admit that they are not familiar with everything, right? <laughs> and yeah. if they if they aren't comfortable in a topic, they'll tell you, hey, uh, further explain that for me, or, or, or how come this, right? They'll ask further questions because they don't want to. They want to make sure they understand it. They're not afraid of it looking like they don't understand. They want to make sure they actually understand it and that they're learning, right? I think that's cra- something that's a lot of those people have in common. There was a study actually not too long ago, Ron, where they were saying of the uh, LSATs that were taken, they asked them how they thought they did, right? These students, and the bottom twenty-five percent of them overestimated how well they had done, right, <laughs> by more than fifty percent. Wow. Meanwhile, the students that were the top twenty-five percent slightly underestimated how well they've done, right? So the worst performers overestimated their abilities while the bottom performers did the opposite, right? So I think that's, that was kind of an interesting statistic. And I know lots of times there, there are people out there who come to see you, and they have that discovery meeting, and, and you find that they, they think they know a lot more about their finances than they really did. Yeah, that's a great point you brought up there. It's funny because some people um, will come in and they and they may seem very knowledgeable and they might be, but they'll they'll act like they know everything, right? Which is okay, and they'll they'll say that they're very comfortable with all this. And you dive in further and you can understand that they they probably don't have as big of a grasp as they might have thought, right? Yeah. Because and that's okay. You don't I don't expect everybody to know everything about everything. But uh, it's funny because, like you said, I mean, more often than not, many times people come in here and they, and they might not know everything, right? They might have a good idea of what stocks are or what bonds are or what a 401k is. But when it comes to risk comfort level, when it comes to putting all of these different pieces together to create an income plan, tax management, alternative investment styles, right? Like structured notes, annuities, life insurance products. Then you have all the different management styles, active, tactical, passive, right? There's a lot of different things that could be thrown in uh, to a financial plan. And so like you said, a lot of our more you could tell more knowledgeable clients, they're, they're, they ask a lot of questions, right? They want to understand a lot of the ins and outs so they learn it so they can understand it, right? And they're not just nodding their head saying, yeah, that sounds great. They're asking why this, why that, and, and how does this benefit me during this circumstance or that circumstance? And I always tell people, again, like I said in the earlier segments, that's probably my favorite part of my job is going over the financial planning piece and, and educating people on how some of these different strategies can, can be useful to them or why they might not be as you know a great fit in their, in their circumstance. And, and really taking a deep dive there. I know as long as you've been a financial advisor, you have certainly uh, you know, uh, learned all along the way, and uh, you have certainly learned from the experiences of, uh, of mm-hmm. everybody out there. And, and you know, everybody has a different scenario. But I think the same is true with geniuses. They're able to learn from the experiences of others and then apply it to their own lives. Yeah, that, that's very true. I, like you said, I think a lot of them are very good at, and, and not everybody's this way, but I think a lot of people are. And some of us turn a blind eye, right? Uh, where we, we, we don't want to learn that, that lesson yet. We'll learn it later on down the road. Really? Uh, but you know, you look at a lot of these people that are out there, they're learning from their friends. They're learning from their family. Uh, they've seen people go through a lot of different things different scenarios where they know how things are going to work out. They don't jump to conclusions, but they understand, hey, if I did this differently, this can impact me here. If I you know, did this differently, it would, it would hurt me here. They understand because they've seen people make these mistakes. And there's a lot of different people that say, you know, smart people out there, they learn from their own mistakes, but geniuses learn from the mistakes of others, right? Yeah. A lot of those people are, are looking around and seeing what people are doing and understanding, well, that's maybe I want to do things that way, or I, I know I don't want to do things this way. And so I think that's part of what, what an advisor brings to the table. A lot of people always ask me, why, why do I need a financial advisor? If I didn't have one ever, why do I need one now before retirement? Right? Which is a very valid question. Yeah. And I always say it's because there's a lot of things that come up in retirement and a lot of different a lot of different variables that come up in retirement that you've never faced before, right? Uh, planning for retirement income. A lot of people have always went out there and worked for a paycheck. 
right? And now all of a sudden, you're supposed to use your portfolio to provide a paycheck. So it's a whole different uh, mindset, as well as you look at a lot of the other tax planning, estate planning, all these other things are going to come up, as well as healthcare, long-term care, losing a spouse, having to replace income, all these other variables that are going to come up, as well as do you have enough money to last the rest of your life, right? That's one of those questions you've never really had to worry about because you've always went to work and got a paycheck, right? So it's just such a different time. And I think that's one thing the advisors bring to the table is we help people do this all the time, especially in my case, Ron, like we always talk about, I help people that are always pretty much planning or preparing for retirement. So I've seen you know hundreds of these different scenarios play out. So we bring a really great you know, really great mindset to the table where we've seen things work out great and not great. And we're able to bring a lot of those experiences to the table and show you how different scenarios might be better in your situation and bring that added value to help guide you to get to retirement as well as to get you through retirement. So if you're looking for someone to maybe bring some value to you and your family when it comes to retirement planning and you're getting close or maybe just getting ready to start, I think it's time to give us a call and again, see if we can bring some value to the table for you. And the number to call is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN for uh, Logan Sadler and the folks at Regary Financial. Now, as Logan just said, even the do-it-yourselfers out there, there's some people who, who do financial planning for themselves. But, you know, presumably when it comes to retirement, you're only doing it one time. But Logan Sadler has done it hundreds of times and has learned from every one of those experiences, every one of those scenarios out there. He's seen just about everything that comes along. And there are lots of intricacies and a lot of strategies and a lot of planning that's involved so, in this whole thing. So why not call Logan Sadler, have a discovery meeting, and get a conversation going with him. It's free. And there's no obligation. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make that happen. 888-823-PLAN. Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler, and the beat will go on in just a moment. You're listening to The Financial Beat. You're listening to The Financial Beat, the show that makes sure your financial plan has the perfect pitch. Back now with more of The Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. My name is Ron Stutz. I am honored to hang out with uh, Logan for an hour every week on this show. And remember that Regary Financial is a good place to talk about your retirement, everything related to that. And they also have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and Medicare specialists. They help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for clients. It is a one-stop shop at Regary Financial. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like uh, to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, the same guy you hear on this show. 888-823-PLAN. Again, that conversation, no cost and no obligation. i got a quote of the week here from uh, Will Rogers, great American philosopher. Mm-hmm. Many years ago, he said, half our life is spent trying to find something to do with the time we have rushed through life. <laughs> <laughs> trying to save. I guess that would apply to some people in retirement, huh? Yeah, definitely can. I, it's funny. I was just talking actually right before we started uh, doing the show here, Ron. I was just talking to our business, my business partner here, Debbie, and we were talking about how how valuable time is. Right? It's it's something where you can get a lot of different things in life, but you know, more time is not one thing you could typically negotiate. And so, yeah, it's funny how a lot of us are rushing through certain phases to get to the next one, right? And then we get to the next one, and we go, well, now what do we do? Right? Whether that's you know, parenthood or retirement or whatever it is, it's just interesting that yeah, time time is a uh, time to me is a scary thing. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, talking about the time and life and some things just happen in life that you're not prepared for. Other things happen that you know are going to happen. Uh, you know, they always say the only thing certain in life is death and taxes. And we'll yep. talk about that in just a second here. But sometimes <laughs> events happen in life that make it really important for you to carefully take a good assessment of your financial situation. And Logan, I wonder if you will take the time to explain why each of these events is usually a good reason for a financial review. Perfect. Okay. Uh, One situation is when you move to a new job. Now, this is a planned event. You got a a new job, but that's a good opportunity to, to assess where you are. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, Ron, I think uh, a lot of uh, people we meet with are going through transitions, right? And I think it's either transitioning to retirement, maybe it's, you know, a lot of different things we'll probably cover here. But one of the ones that's a big transition is moving to a new job, right? Even if it is planned, it's a big transition. I think one of the things we help a lot of our clients do is, you know, look at their new wages, right? Maybe they're getting a huge raise and they're, you know, going to have to plan for where's money going to go? Are we paying off debt, investing more, you know, all that. Maybe we're taking a decrease in pay, right? But maybe we have more benefits. So how are we going to structure things that way? There's a lot to look at there as far as that goes, as well as, you know, you have old IRAs or 401ks or, or, or pensions or things like that at that old job that you now have to plan for, right? Do we look at, should we be rolling our 401ks over into an IRA and discussing the pros and cons of that and looking over what the advantages are there? You know, there's a lot of different changes and, uh, in my opinion, a lot of changes as well as a lot of different things we need to be looking at to maximize the new situation because, uh, you know, that's one of those big changes in life is definitely changing employment. And I've found where a lot of people have been with these jobs are on, right, for 10, 15, 20 years. And so it's a big transition sometimes into these new uh, new facilities. So it's an important time to me to come in, sit down with the advisor. But hopefully, if you're a client of ours, that's what we do is, you know, bring everybody in on those transitions and throughout our review process to where we're looking at, okay, you know, looking at the budget, looking at benefits, looking at the 401ks, all that stuff, and making sure how does this affect the plan, maybe positively or, or negatively, right? And looking at how we're going to make those changes. Moving to a new job definitely requires uh, an assessment of uh, what's going on in your life. But uh, here's another situation that's even more uh, important and even more crucial for you to take a look at things. And it's an unplanned event. Uh, how about if you get fired or or laid off and a lot of that going on these days? Yeah, that's another uh, another big life change, right? And I, I, you know, that's why we, we we're really big on touching base with a lot of our clients around. We touch base with them quite frequently. And uh, a lot of the reason why is because things like this, right? A lot of unplanned, we could have the best financial plan in the world, right? But unfortunately, things change. Things come up uh, like this, right? Unfortunately, losing a job. My biggest thing now is I always ask the clients in a very simple manner is, what's next, right? And, and, and what that allows them to do is tell me where their mind's at. Because some of our clients, if they're maybe they're 65 years old or 62 years old and they got laid off, they might not be going back to work, right? Yeah. Might, might, they might want to look at the financial plan and say, well, Logan, do I have to go back to work or could I retire now? What, what would that look like? How would that impact the plan? Well, let's let's check it out, right? Let's look at that. Um, or they might say, you know, Logan, I'm, I'm too young to retire. I, I wanted to work five or six more years maybe, or maybe 10 more years, depending on the age. And okay, perfect. So what are we going to do? What type of jobs are we looking at? You know, what, what are we going to do in the meantime to create that Band-Aid? Uh, do we need to replace income? Stuff like that, right? A lot of those conversations to me are super, super important because as life changes, we got to make sure we're updating our plan and making sure we're looking at things from the mental state, right? What are we doing mentally to get ready to for the next part of this journey? as well as financially, how are we going to, uh, you know, uh, make this next plan, you know, work and how are we going to adjust things to fit your current circumstance? How about when you receive an inheritance? I mean, normally you would think, hey, that's a really good thing. And, and you know, some headaches might go along with it and you need to make sure that you handle it properly. Yeah, like you said, Ron, I mean, there's a, obviously I always tell people it's never a happy day when you get an inheritance just because obviously that means you probably lost somebody that was close to you. Yeah. And, you know, but obviously once that, you know, once you deal with the emotional side of things, like you said, Ron, the financial aspect of it could be a huge, I don't like to use the word burden, but a huge responsibility, right? And a lot of people do very well with it. They, they you know, they seek the right advice. They use, you know, an advisor or whoever's going to help guide them and they make a lot of the right decisions. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that don't, right? They think they could either do it themselves and they make a lot of bad decisions. And I always tell people, it's amazing when you inherit a million dollars or $500,000 or 100000 whatever the amount is. It's amazing how fast that money can go if you don't plan properly, right? You say, you know, if you give somebody a million dollars, it you know, a lot of the lottery winners and things like that, they're out of money pretty quick, right, Ron? We've, right, we've so talked right, about right. that. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the things we do very well is helping people through those transitions. I've helped a lot of our clients uh, with their kids, right? They've, they've passed away now and they were with us for maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And unfortunately, they passed away and now their kids have a large sum of money that they just inherited. And now they got to look at how do we structure this for their lives? And so we're really good about working through what your goals are because we got to have something, right? We want to maybe want to buy a house or maybe we want to pay down debt or whatever it is, but you got to look at things through a tax lens 
as well as the investment lens, as well as how does this tie into our overall situation. So we do a lot of that, Ron, to make sure we're, we're making sure everything's on track. And like I said, unfortunately, and fortunately, we have a lot of experience helping people handle large inheritances to make sure things are going the right way and things are invested properly. Taxes, the tax situations are looked at to make sure we're netting the most of this you know, circumstance and making sure we're using it to the best we can for your plan. If you just joined us, you've got the financial beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Uh, wherever you are in Southern California, thank you so much for listening today. The number to call if you'd like to get in touch with Logan for a, a no-cost and no-obligation conversation is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. I'll give you that number again coming up in just a few minutes here. We're talking about all the various things that happen in life, some expected, some not expected at all. And there's a pretty high percentage of folks who uh, late in life in particular face some kind of a serious medical issue. And that's always a time for reflection and also just assessing where you are. Yeah, like you said, Ron, there's a, there's a lot to go over there as far as that goes, as, as assessing where everything's at. How, how is all this going to work out in your financial plan? What what changes do you got to make, right? There's there's so many different things that come up throughout throughout the retirement plan journey and throughout life to where you're going to need further advice to help address a lot of those issues that are current, but also that might continue to come up, right? Or maybe even continue to get worse or better depending on the circumstance. Yep. And one other thing that uh, I wanted to mention here, and this is something that unfortunately, I know that, you know, in working with uh, older folks, you have to deal with a lot. And that is death of a spouse that can turn your whole world upside down. It can, Ron. Like you said, that's probably one of the uh, hardest things for most people to go through, understandably. You know, a lot of our clients have uh, been married a long time or or, or known the person a long time. And so it's something where it's never an easy thing to go through. Again, you always have two things, right? You have the emotional impact and then you have the financial impact. Because unfortunately, a lot of the times after you get through the emotional impact of it, you also have, man, that might have really changed things financially, especially if you didn't plan ahead of time. You know, I always tell people, you know, if you have two people that have a good size 401k and some social security as their retirement, a lot of the times you're going to lose one of the social securities, right? You get the higher one and you lose the lower one. Same with pensions. Sometimes people take a single pension payout or a reduced benefit when you lose a spouse. So there's so many different things to, to plan for if something happens to you or your spouse. And if you're one of those people going through that, Currently, it's super important you reach out to somebody to help guide you through that. And uh, if you're one of those people that's getting ready to plan and prepare for retirement, you got to make sure inside your financial plan you've talked about that because there's something where income replacement is not only for young people, right? If something happens to them, it's also going to be down the road in retirement. There's, we got to make sure we're coming up with ways to replace income if something happens to you or your spouse because the you know the chances of it happening are not you know not slim to none right there's a very high chance that one of you will pass away before the other and so making sure that's covered in the financial plan so you could focus on the emotional side and not have to worry about the financial side. And that's that's what we do, Ron. Like we always talk about in the show, we're, we're financial advisors that help people plan and prepare for retirement. And we have a lot of experience of helping people in that retirement zone, right? Between 50 to 65 or so, or even a little bit older and a little bit younger, depending on your situation. And uh, you know, we're one of those advisors that really takes a holistic approach at looking at not just how to put a product in your portfolio or how to sell you a stock or a bond type thing, but really, yes, we got to manage the assets. Yes, we got to look at all these different variables that are going to come up and how are we going to orchestrate that and customize the plan to fit your situation and make it unique to you and your family. So if you're getting close to retirement or maybe just starting, probably a great time to reach out. And if you already have a plan, maybe even get a second opinion and see if we can't uh, make some adjustments to get you on a better path for your retirement. Call Logan Sadler's office at 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. That is for Regary Financial. Two convenient offices, one in Hamlet, Hemet and one in Redlands and wherever you are in Southern California we certainly appreciate your taking the time to listen to the show today a lot of good ideas being thrown out there all the time on this show by Logan Sadler and uh, of course uh, we have uh, podcasts available YouTube videos and talk more about that in our next segment here but the number to call if you like to have a discovery meeting is 888-823-PLAN that's 888-823-PLAN and uh, Logan Sadler of course is a guy who works with all three generations of the client families. Many of those clients have been with the firm for more than 25 years. Isn't it about time that you got around to making that phone call? 888-823-PLAN. 
Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler, and we'll be right back with more on The Financial Beat. It's getting to know you time. You're listening to The Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler, and I think Logan Sadler is an excellent financial advisor, and, uh, you know, he's certainly found his calling. But, uh, Logan, let me ask you a question. Might uh, need a little thinking on this one, but (laughs) if you had to pick a new career completely unrelated to what you do now, what would it be? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. Um, unrela- so if I had to, you know, obviously I think the one I would do if I had to do something differently that was similar would be, a, I'd probably want to go into the CPA realm, uh-huh. but that's too close to financial. So I think that's cheating. Um, so <laughs> so I, to answer your question better, I, you know, what always really interested me as a kid uh, was I always wanted to be a firefighter. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's something that, you know, very honorable job. Uh, obviously they very active and a fun job, uh, a lot, yeah. lot of stress to it, I'm sure, as well as probably something in the medical field, like an RN or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think those two careers would probably be something totally outside the financial realm that I've always kind of had interest in. And again, you get to help people be around a lot of different environments and, and definitely uh, you know good long-term careers. And we actually work with a lot of RNs and firefighters, so it's funny that you know I'd pick that, but that would probably be, probably be my answer, Ron, those two. Those two. Logan, I think you would be a great firefighter. I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, you know, because you've played a lot of sports in the past and all this kind of thing. And, you know, that's perfect, man. I, I, I have just the ultimate respect for firefighters. You know, yeah, me too. Me too. Very country. honorable job. Yeah, it really is. Say, so, uh, thank you, firefighters, for all that you do. And, Logan, thank you for all your comments on the show. And we'll be right back with more. If you've spent the majority of your life diligently saving for your retirement future and have accumulated a nice sum, then listen up. Logan Sadler of Regary Financial has compiled a special guide for high net worth investors exploring nine investment pitfalls. Get the guide now to see how many mistakes you might be exposed to with your current financial plan. Text the word ADVICE to 21000. Learn about risk, diversification, taxes, emotional decision making, and much more. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. One, two, three, four! When musicians are performing, they typically need someone to count them into each song. Without that count in, the musicians might be out of sync and the song could fall apart. It's similar to your financial plan. All of your investments must be in sync, working towards your financial goals. Keep listening to the financial beat and learn how to make sure that your investments are playing together perfectly. We're back now with more of the Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know. We still have a few minutes left in the show today. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a one-on-one conversation with Logan about your situation. And Logan Sadler will make it easy for you. You can do it on the phone or via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into the office and either Hemet or Redlands. But we call it a discovery meeting, and that is where uh, Logan is able to discover some things about you. You are able to get to know him better, and then you decide if you'd like to work together. And if not, hey, that's cool. There's no obligation, no strings attached at all, and no charge for this. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. 888-823-PLAN. Hey, Logan, I've got a, you know, we talk about these crimes of the week uh, every week on the show, and there are some ridiculous federal crimes in the books. Because we're always looking out for our listeners, though, we try to make you aware of one federal crime every week, to reduce the chances of you ending up in some kind of a, a you know, sticky situation where you run afoul of the law. We don't want that to happen. Well, did you realize it's a federal crime to live on a boat in the Everglades for more than 14 days? <laughs> where do they come up <laughs> no, with this? <laughs> no kidding. And one thing I was going to laugh at, who would want to live on a boat in the Everglades, right? I mean, uh, I, I don't know about you, Ron, but I, I, have you ever been there before? <laughs> I, I, yeah, sort of. I haven't spent any time there, but yeah. Yeah, I know where it is. I didn't spend 14 days there, I'll tell you that. No. But I, I did go there on a boat, you know, that airboat tour they have, and it was a blast. Yeah. Heck of an experience. Anybody that hasn't done it, I highly recommend it. But I could tell you what, I, I don't want to spend 14 days out there. I know how many snakes and alligators and things like that there yeah. are. So <laughs> I don't know who's camping out there overnight on those boats, but not, not me. As always, with these silly laws that are on the books, it was a case of somebody doing it one time. And yep. they want to put something on the books to make sure that people don't continue to do it. So I know. I guess crazy? somebody did it at some point. So, hey, let's go to the mailbag here for something that makes a little more sense here. We have some great questions, as always. First one is from Beth in Yukaipa, 
And Beth says, are these CCRC communities worth looking at as a retirement living and long-term care option? And I guess the first thing to do is uh, explain what a CCRC community is. Yeah, it basically what it is, is it's basically like one of those retirement communities that we have all seen out there. And a lot of them have in-house uh, long-term care options or nursing homes or, or some, to- some sort of staff inside yeah. those facilities that's able to facilitate that, right? So they call those like a transition home where basically you kind of, when you're retiring, you can move to those. They're good. Most of them have good little communities intact. In and then they also have for that later stage of life, right? They have some of those uh, in-house facilities available. That's a great question. I, it really is because I've seen a lot of them out there where they've been really great fits for certain clients. Some of them are very fun, have a lot to offer, can be a great you know uh, lifestyle change for especially people getting a little bit older in retirement, you know, and things like that. As well as to have that in-house long-term care stuff is is something where I think Ron, it's really important for for a lot of people to have those concerns. So I would say finding the right fit to me is super important, right? And you're up there. Was it Ukaipa? I think is what you said, Ron. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I mean that that whole area up there, there's a lot of different facilities up that way that are very well known, and uh, like I said, could be a good fit just depending on what you're looking at, you know, as far as how active you are, what what type of community you're looking for, you know, what age you are. But finding those right fits to me is more important than saying if they're good or bad because there's definitely some really good ones out there, and then there's some that depending on your situation might not be as good of a fit. Yeah. But I do th- I do think that is something to explore for a lot of people for sure. As always, when it comes to financial planning, I mean it's all up to the individual there's uh you know everybody's scenario is different for sure uh randall has a question and randall is in orange county randall says logan i've always assumed that i would send my kids to an in-state college but my daughter is very interested in a private school that costs four times as much can i really (laughs) just sorry randall Uh, can i really (laughs) justify that kind of expense for a college education i'm skeptical that her education would really be four times better there yeah (laughs) yeah you're not seeing the four times return there i guess right is what you're saying exactly um and i i agree with you it's a tough one to look at i always say there's two things to look at right probably more than that but just the two things i always think of is you have you have the uh, your daughter's happiness and experience, right? I mean, depending on colleges and stuff like that, I think a lot of it to me is experience for people uh, to get to kind of understand who they are, what they want to do, and, and kind of surround themselves for that next phase. So yeah, it could be a really great culture and really be a great fit for, for the experience side. Number two comes down to cost and value, right? Yeah. How much extra uh, cost is it and what extra value are you going to get in return for those colleges. Again, a lot of times it's not much of a difference. Again, if you're talking, you know, a good school here is a good school there type thing, right? It's just one is a lot cheaper, maybe a little bit closer to home. I know a lot of college students are typically trying to either stay real close to home and not change things too much. And some are totally looking to blow up the the current lifestyle, right? And go to a different state, maybe different weather or whatever the reason is. So you're in a tough spot. I would really kind of sit down and talk with your daughter on this about how serious is she really looking at at doing this? You know, what reasons why? What are the benefits to it? And then I'd also go over as the financial advisor, you know, I'm going to talk about how does it fit into your guys' finances, right? Is it something where you guys could afford to help her out on this? Or was she going to have to maybe supplement with loans now? Or how is this whole situation is going to look and maybe talk through it with her a little bit, right? You don't have to tell her, hey, mom and dad are broke or mom and dad are rich, but, you know, kind of talk through some different situations. And I'd be happy to help guide you a little bit on this too, because we have a lot of experience on helping clients have those conversations. Because like I said, it comes down to those two things, the emotional side of money, right? Which is typically the um, experiences and things like that for them, but also the cost. Like you said, it's hard to argue that she's going to get four times the value, like you said, but have that conversation. Yeah. And for a lot of people, you know, they wouldn't even be able to consider doing that because i mean going to college at all anywhere is expensive that's for sure yes it's like buying a house (laughs) yeah even with all the loans that are available and and all that kind of thing it's just something that you know some people really have a hard time affording and then when you uh, consider something that's four times as much as an in-state school wow that would put it out of the question for some folks yeah for sure hey uh one more question here today it's from miguel and menifee and miguel says i thought about meeting with a financial advisor to plan my retirement and I have a fairly large 401k that I need to look at rolling over but I also have some credit card debt that I need to get paid off should I get that debt eliminated before meeting with you or uh, any other advisor yeah that's a great question Miguel you know uh, what I would say is if you are in that spot where you say you're looking like you're getting ready to meet with a financial advisor or, or, or give us a call and you're looking at that 
I would say, no, you don't need to have all your debt paid off, right? I think one of the things that most financial advisors should be offering, and one of the things we do is that holistic plan we're talking about. We're not just going to talk about, hey, you can roll your 401k over, right? But yeah, that's going to be probably part of the conversation as far as exactly what you're asking here. But also, how is this all factoring into our plan, right? How are we going to pay off that debt? What other assets do we have? Do we have any rentals? Do we have you know, a pension? Where are we at as far as your retirement plan? How much longer are you working, right? A lot more of those questions that are going to wrap into a financial plan. So I would say it's, you know, the earlier you can get in contact with a financial advisor, and especially when you have opportunities like rollovers from old 401ks or current 401ks, and you're over, you know, 59 and a half, all these different rules that come up that where it, there's options to roll over things, you should definitely be having a conversation with a full service financial advisor. That's going to be able to look at everything because you don't want someone just to manage a 401k, right? You want an advisor that's typically going to bring a lot more value in return. So I definitely say, yeah, if you're at that point, you got a large balance in the 401k, you have some other things you want to talk to talk to us about as far as uh, financial planning and your overall retirement plan and how that, all that's going to factor in. That's when I think we'll be a great fit and be able to kind of really help guide you and, and give you some more value, like I said, than just than just managing a 401k. There's there's too many advisors out there. I feel that, again, there's a lot of really good ones. And then there's a lot of people out there that all they want to do is manage assets or, or you know sell you a product and not do a lot of the hard work, which is the financial planning, looking at income projections, tax management, all, all of that stuff that, that we do here at our firm. And we'd be happy to ha- help you with, Miguel, and any other listeners out there that are interested or, or maybe you're kind of listening to the show and or have been listening for a while and are, are understanding a lot of the topics we talk about might pertain to you, definitely probably a good time to reach out and again, see if we could uh, be a good fit to work together in the future or, or now. Miguel, Randall, Beth, all good questions today. And it's important to go ahead and call this number, the sooner the better, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number right now. Leave a message with your name and phone number, and you'll get a call back from Regary Financial. And you can arrange a time to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. We call it a discovery meeting. You get to know him. He gets to know you. All of that is not going to cost you anything at all, and there's no obligation involved. In other words, you can talk to Logan, then you can walk away, but you're going to know a lot more just from having that brief conversation. 888-823-PLAN, your number to call for Regary Financial Offices in Redlands and Hemet. Logan Sadler helps folks all over Southern California, all over the country, really. There are folks out there uh, everywhere who depend on Logan to help them get to and through retirement. One more time, let me give you that number, 888-823-PLAN. This is Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. Logan, it's been my pleasure. Always is. Yeah, me too, Ron. I really enjoyed the show this week. Hopefully, uh, all you listeners out there, again, we thank you for tuning in each week and listening to us on the podcast and watching the videos. We appreciate that. And uh, hopefully, again, you found some good insights and value. And uh, we're going to be back here again next week trying to bring you the same energy and, and hopefully a great show. You've been listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. We'll see you next week. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.